Hi, and welcome to episode 124 or 124, however you want to say it, of C3 Crystals, Cauldrons, and Cocktails. I'm Ren. I'm River. And in today's episode, we are going to talk about how to write your own spells, Mm -hmm. adding, you know, a personal touch to your magical practice. I know that we've talked here and there about this before, but we are going to be going a little bit more into detail, maybe doing a better job than what we have. I think so. And, you know, everybody, this is like a a basic thing that people probably want to know. And we've never really gone into deep detail about how, how do you write a spell? I mean, some people it's just natural and you just do it, Mm -hmm. but some people are really, really struggle with. So I need step one, step two, step three. What is it? How do I do it? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I know we've talked about in various episodes, like, oh, you just can write a spell like this and it can rhyme if you want or mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. It could blah. be a sentence. It could just, you know, whatever. It's whatever yeah. your intent is. It can be said in your head. It can be read mm-hmm. out loud. It can be mm-hmm. sung. It could be, you know, et cetera. But we haven't actually done an episode, which is funny. It um, is funny. I, I can't believe we haven't done this before. Yeah. But first, more importantly on today's episode. (laughs) What are we drinking? (laughs) So what are we drinking? So today we're not fun. (laughs) (laughs) You know, we are, it's in the middle, we're in the middle of February now and things are getting crazy and Mm -hmm. we just haven't had time. And I feel like we have plenty of drinks to put together a cocktail book so far. I think so too. So we've kind of been like, yeah, in an agreement, like, sure, we can have maybe a fun drink next week or so, but maybe Mm -hmm. this week, let's just not even try to take everything out of our cabinets and make a concoction that might not even be good. We're actually... uh recording earlier in the day so you know 10 o'clock in the morning although you know I mean I'm I'm never one to say no to anything (laughs) but uh this morning there just wasn't time so yes I'm actually just drinking water (laughs) yeah I mean I have some water I had some coffee earlier so we can say I'm drinking coffee yeah I had tea earlier actually yeah so it's like it's more of a cozy day I mean it is a Mm -hmm. little bit colder Mm -hmm. given maybe kind of who knows? <laughs> yeah. With the weather so, outside, you wake up, I take out the dog, I'm cold, it's 36 degrees. And then in the afternoon, it's like 56. So we'll I see know. how we'll it see. is what today. What is today old? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. But this is more than just abracadabra, you know, of mm-hmm. like writing spells. So mm-hmm. let's get into it. So yeah, spells have two distinct phases. The first one is concentrating on gathering that power that you're going to use when you cast the spell. Mm -hmm. And the second is releasing that energy with focused intent in a particular direction. Yes. I know we have really hounded in. Intent is Mm -hmm. key. It's very important. That is what magic is. I feel like that's most of our episodes. Intent, intent. But Mm -hmm. it's true. Spells Mm -hmm. are fueled by intent. So be clear on your purpose and then just define what you want to achieve in your spell. Kind of don't go in going, okay, this is kind of what I want. Like here, here, no, no, you need to be very, this is exactly what I want from point A to point B to all the way to Z so that you understand what could happen and what the outcomes could be of the spell. I mean, you're messing with energies and you don't want to send haphazard energy out into mm-hmm. the universe. You yes. don't know what might happen. Yes. So as we've constantly said, you can write in your journal, journal. about what it is. Yes, yeah. About what it is you're hoping to achieve. And so this helps you think it through. This helps you narrow it down and it slows your brain down. And, you know, when you're writing, it makes you really listen to yourself as to what it is that you're putting on paper. So that Mm -hmm. way you can get that proper intent. And then once you've made that decision, you might want to write it down. This is not how I do it. Well, it's kind of how I do it, but you might want to write it down on something that you can see while you work. Mm -hmm. It could be like a piece of paper or a large index card that you fold in half so that it's standing up where you can actually see it while you're casting your spell. You want to make sure that this intention statement is a simple, clear statement explaining what it is at stake and what you hope to hope to accomplish. So let's say you say, I'm a little tight financially and I will work this magic to bring prosperity my way. Mm -hmm. Or 
I'm preparing to begin a course of study with the Alder Circle, and I want to dedicate myself to the work that lies ahead. You know, that's getting your intent right there. You know mm-hmm. what it is you're trying mm-hmm. to focus on. Or it's spring cleaning time. I, my ritual space needs a good spring cleaning. Mm-hmm. So you t- you stand up this little tinted paper so that on one side of your work space so that it can guide you and inspire you while you craft the spell. Yeah. Now, after saying that, I, I use my computer to start with. So I'm oh. a little bit different. Um, my my brain thinks through my fingers. So I will work and rework and all of that on my computer, which is kind of like a journal. You can certainly have a digital journal. Oh, yeah, definitely. But then I do take it and I always handwrite the final spell because I think that adds my personal intention to the magic. Mm-hmm. Something about that physical writing of that spell makes it somehow stronger, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. And that's not, this isn't like the only way to start right. with intention. Um, there's so many ways that you I mean, could just honestly, do a whole podcast on ways of intent. <laughs> you could do a Pinterest board oh, yeah. that has the vibes and feels that you're going for for a particular spell. So yeah, mm-hmm. there's all kinds of ways to all start kinds of ways. with this intention mm-hmm. thing. And then another way um, to kind of incorporate things into your spell other than intent, like we always talk about. Here's another mm-hmm. thing we always talk about, gathering tools. <laughs> oh, yes. Got to have know, the tools. You got to have your tools. And tools can boil down to herbs, candles, crystals, mm-hmm. athames, like physical c- tools, like chalices. It could be a candle. I already said candle. It could be literally anything. It could be a piece of artwork. It could be a mirror. It could be mm-hmm. a a oh, rock mirror. you picked up outside, a branch, yeah. a leaf, et cetera. For sure. Mirror is a good it one. It can literally be anything. I'm trying to look around my house and be like, what could I use? <laughs> I mean, I you could even use soap, you know, like yeah, anything. For cleansing. Yes, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. So each tool can specifically enhance your spell for whatever you're going for. Yeah, whatever your purpose is. And yes. speaking of cleansing, don't forget to cleanse and bless or consecrate your tools before oh, you yeah, begin that's casting very with true. them, mm-hmm. especially if you use them often, because mm-hmm. you don't want residual magic. Yeah, coming all the into mix this. up of the, yeah. I like yeah. kind of in my head, it's like gunk, <laughs> like magic gunk. <laughs> Magical gunk. Yeah. So, and yes. you can also try to think outside the box when you're composing a spell. Remember that magic relies heavily on symbolism. That's why we talk about symbolism all the time. Mm-hmm. So there's nothing wrong with, you know, I don't have any crystals or I don't have this or that. There's nothing wrong with using the ingredients you have on hand. Just like Ren was just saying, you can use a Hot Wheel car to signify yes, absolutely. transportation or mm-hmm. travel mm-hmm. or anything. Chess pieces mm-hmm. for strategy, yep. uh, crayons to bring color into your life, Mm -hmm. a calculator for logic, sunglasses to help calm you down if you need that vibe or or to look forward to a summer type vibe. Yeah. yeah. So you can use anything. So don't anything. Yeah. Don't get caught up in, okay, it has to be crystals and herbs and Mm -hmm, mm and Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Anything can be witchy. We figured that out. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and then now the next thing, after you have, you know, your intent and then you have your tools, you Mm -hmm. kind of want to structure the spell. Mm -hmm. So maybe set a scene. Um, You need to create that sacred space. Yeah. I mean, I feel like uh, I don't really have a sacred space that I can give an example of because, Mm -hmm. like, whenever I do my spells, I don't ever write them down. And it's not even really – it's my spells – again, are more of a manifestation. manifestation. That's mm-hmm. what I'm really big on. And so whenever I manifest, I I mean, I it's the same thing. So I should write it down just so I don't mess up a word or something. But it's mm-hmm. I recite the exact same thing over and over and over again on a nightly basis while I'm laying in bed or when I'm at okay. my most relaxed and I'm not focused on anything else. And I can mm-hmm. set my intent towards that. So setting a scene is important but if you do it sort of like me where you don't really have like you don't sit down at your altar you don't have Mm -hmm. like a sacred space then you can i mean i guess my sacred space would be my bed or Mm -hmm. my couch or whatever well and and that's the space that allows you to get into that meditative um frame of mind that you really need to do your magic 
And then you interesting. It is. And I know you do it very differently. I know a lot Mm -hmm. of people do it very differently. Um, Mm -hmm. But I think it's also very important to cast a circle or provide yourself with protection beforehand. For sure. So you cleanse your space. I, what I do, I'll physically say what I do because we never, I don't think we, that's what we need to do. We need to do an episode where we just talk about ourselves and how we about do how we stuff. practice because i feel idea. like we talk about of like a lot of what you could do and what you could incorporate mm-hmm. but we never talk about ourselves well that's true and we're trying to just provide information on mm-hmm. how things can be done because yes like you said everybody's different you and i are different and, and we're about so as much close stuff as you can be that you and, could do yeah yeah so yeah so what i do in the sense of protection and quote, casting a circle or cleansing your space, et cetera. What I do is I focus on uh, a a big globe of light, golden globe of light, basically, like Mm -hmm. a shield. And whenever I think of it, I think of the game World of Warcraft. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we're both uh, World of Warcraft nerds. So So maybe you don't know, but in the game, there are things that you can do to help shield your life. And mm-hmm. it physically, sometimes in certain characters, you physically get a circle around your character mm-hmm. for a duration mm-hmm. of time. So mm-hmm. I kind of think of it like that in a way. I think that's the best representation that I can give without. I mean, basically, that's visualization, which yeah. is a huge part of yes. of casting a circle or and casting so a protection area. When I do that, I visualize first myself engulfed in mm-hmm. this gl- like globe o- o- oval globe around me of mm-hmm. this color and it's like transparent with like a halo glow okay so first it's on me then i cast it towards my husband and my pets because anything that i do will also affect them if i'm bringing Good something point. into my household i want my family to be protected as well mm-hmm. and then i go through and I surround, and it's not very big. It's 600 square feet apartment. <laughs> so I think it t- takes maybe a little less energy on my part because I have a mm-hmm. smaller smaller house. Mm-hmm. But then I envision my entire house surrounded by that golden orb as well. Okay. So it's kind of like a malleable, malleable, I cannot say the word, malleable. Malleable? <laughs> mal- <laughs> malleable. It, uh, so it kind of goes into like the corners and it's mm-hmm. not it's not it's perfectly not a sphere. rigid it's, yeah it's, yeah, not a it's rigid like a sphere. free-flowing energy mm-hmm. type of thing and so that's what i do and then i manifest and then i quote cast my spell because basically manifestation okay. is the exact same thing okay so you're going to want to make sure that your space is cleansed or protected and then mm-hmm. you're going to have make sure that space is quote sacred or a space you can definitely visualize and do your spell. Yeah, I think that's super important, especially if you're new to spell casting. There uh, protection is a big deal when you're just getting started because you're messing with energies and you're not quite sure what you're doing yet. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you don't have to cast a circle. No. But I I think that is a great idea. I would to suggest, do that. yes. I actually do cast circles. I use I make uh resin athames, which I just love and Mm-hmm. I rotate through them because some of they're all different colors and I just love them. But <laughs> I will use my athame. It's not a knife that can actually cut anything. It's resin. So, mm-hmm. but I use that to physically draw a circle, but I also do visualize mm-hmm. the circle as a protection circle. Yeah. And mine is not more, mine's not really an orb. It's like a wall of oh, okay. protective energy around me. Okay. So, hmm. um, so yeah, so just and be sure to cleanse after you're done too. Oh, yes. Yeah. You don't want yes. that residual mm-hmm. cleansing mm-hmm. hanging. I mean, that residual spell magic hanging around either. Yeah. 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 So now the next part are like the components kind of, of a spell. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. this could involve like either chants, incantations, mm-hmm. et cetera. So you're going to want to craft your words as well to fit your intention. Mm -hmm. And it could be a rhyme, a rhythm. It could be, like I said earlier, a song. You could Mm -hmm. just say it. You could have it in your head. It could maybe even be like a beat to a like song. Like a, it doesn't have to have any words. It could just be 
anything that you want it to be, which I know is easier said than done. Like it could be anything and I'm not giving you any point blank examples, yeah, and that's, but that's part of what I we're mean it. trying to come out with is yeah. to help give you ideas to come yeah. up with your own method. But mm -hmm. yeah, this is the time and your spell working where you've got to figure out what it is. What type of spell is it going to be? Is it going to be poetry? Is it going to be mm -hmm. rhythm? Is it going to be song? Mm -hmm. And so that's at this point, that's where you figure that out. Yes. And mm -hmm. I think it's very important. This part is very important because that's maybe a, an essential part of your craft and you casting spells, or maybe it's just different for this one spell. Maybe you're going to try out a mm -hmm. poem or maybe you trial and error all of them and they just don't work for you and you mm -hmm. use something else. Mm hmm. Let us know mm -hmm. what that is because I'm curious. Yeah, me too. Very curious. You guys should talk to us. I know y'all are Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Y'all download yeah. our episodes and listen. We can see it, but you guys don't communicate. Reach out. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> me too. And then symbolism is also very important. So you could also bring in that imagery and that um, like maybe more symbols. I don't know, like sigils example or... um even just colors or anything that could correspond yeah. to what you're trying to cast. And, and it I would amplify that energy. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I <laughs> no, was just going to okay. say, you know, while you're working in your journal for all of this, you're writing all this down. This is the point in your spell work where you want to write down what symbols mean what it is that you're going for and mm -hmm, what you might mm -hmm. use and you can make little notes. I could do a candle. I could do a red candle. I could do, exactly. you know, this or that. And at, this is the point where you're going to decide, okay, I am going to use the red candle. I'm not going to mm -hmm. use the other things, mm -hmm. or I am going to use this amethyst. I, mm -hmm. you know, that this is the point we haven't started casting magic yet. This mm -hmm. is where you're still doing Gathering the preparation. Everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And okay. So if I were to, so let's say I've told you guys how I do my spells and I don't, I mean, I would I don't want to say traditional like way of casting spells, but let's say traditional way just for mm -hmm. this instance. So like the traditional way of casting a spell is you set your intent, gather all your stuff that you need, but then you're like, okay, what what symbolism does like applies to those things, et cetera? Mm -hmm. Make a make a checklist. And you're like, okay, so intent check, you know, mm -hmm. uh, tools check and then underneath tools you can say hey i really want to use sage and then have like a dash and say the correspondences and the energies that sage provide are yeah. so mm -hmm. that you know what's what you're using and maybe candle be like yeah i definitely want a candle two three etc in this spell and then you can maybe do another dash and say color and the color means this on this one and this on this one so you can just mm -hmm. kind of keep like a clear focus on what so you're not so overwhelmed by all of these things laid out in front of you you have right. a checklist there's no shame and while you're casting the spell take a glance and be like oh yeah yeah, yeah. green means money or and, green and that's means why prosperity. you want to have that right yep. next to you so and it's there's no shame <laughs> whatsoever yeah, mm -hmm. for sure and that might be at this stage where you're writing oh i want to use this mm -hmm. and as you're writing it you're like wait a minute that really doesn't go with what i'm yeah yeah and then you scratch it out and mm -hmm. that's perfectly and that's okay completely fine mm -hmm. and then at the bottom of all of that you could also have like a uh, timing so if you want to do it on a specific moon phase or oh yes like pl like hour or day or month or whatever it may be and you can align it with the natural cycles you can also jot down i need to do it on february 20th because that is a blah moon whatever the and, moon yeah and rainy day and i can collect rainy water on like you know rainy water oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> i can collect water under this moon like you know because I, I do feel like during the rain the water the rain water can become moon charged so that's like extra that's true. so and like you also as far as timing goes if you want seven day salt to use, you got to know when is the oh, full yeah. moon because you put the salt out under the moon during like before the full moon and then after the full moon. So it gets seven days worth of charging. Mm -hmm. So then that salt has all of the different phases of the moon. Yes. So, so I mean, yeah. these are all things that you can definitely incorporate. And that's why I do say a maybe checklist is very mm -hmm. important. So now you need a checklist journal. <laughs> a checklist journal. For cast spell casting. <laughs> but I think I think for sure you're right. The timing is super important. Mm -hmm. Um 
And you really do want to be aware of the moon phase for your spell. Or if you're using the sun's energy, does it need to be at high noon? Does it need to be, is it a morning time spell? You know, and mm-hmm. look at all the oh, correspondences yeah. mm-hmm. for all of those things. And uh, magical workings for gain, increase, or bringing things to you, you want to do when the moon is waxing, going from new to full. Mm -hmm. And when the moon is waning, going from full to dark, that's a great time for magical workings of decreasing or sending something away, getting rid of of things. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, of course, the highest energy occurs at the full moon. So that really is the most powerful time for magical workings, at least for me. I mean, some Mm -hmm. other people might think that the new moon is the most powerful for them. Yeah, I and really I, I like think it's the powerful. new moon. Mm-hmm. I like the new moon. I was born on a new moon. Mm-hmm. And so that to me, I don't know, I resonate more with a new moon than I do with a full moon, but I still resonate with a full moon. Like I still mm-hmm. love the beauty and the energy and everything that comes from a full moon, but the new moon just speaks something different to me. Yeah, I just stare at the moon with goo-goo eyes whenever it's out, no matter what uh-huh. phase it is. Like I you're, just, you're mesmerized. I am. <laughs> I I love it. Mm-hmm. So now we've talked about all the gunk before. <laughs> <laughs> all the gunk. <laughs> all the gunk. All the, the meat, I should say. Um, now you get to the bun. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're making a cheeseburger now, apparently. <laughs> so now you get to write your spell. Okay, so you're going to begin with a clear statement of your intention because you've already set mm-hmm. your intention. So mm-hmm. now you're going to come with the, up a, with a clear statement, kind of like how we gave examples earlier before. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to use this to fulfill your desire and maybe affirm it, if that definitely. makes sense. Like definitely in, in, in the rhythm, like however it may be, but you make it a statement. Yeah. I said a lot now- of the same thing. <laughs> in a row. <laughs> I mean, like you said earlier, it really is more than just abracadabra, mm-hmm. but abracadabra could work too if you've put all that work yes, into the intent could. behind it. Anything could work. Any yeah. if it's just a one word, it could literally be the word potato. And, and as long as you would got, be that. Yeah. Yeah. And that could be used for an earth spell of some kind. Yes. You know, that kind mm-hmm, of thing. Mm-hmm. But we always see in movies that they use Latin to cast uh, spells. And can you hear work. my eye roll? <laughs> I mean, it could work it could as well. Work, just like but Abra- it's been so like overused in mm-hmm. modern media that it's mm-hmm. ugh, ugh. <laughs> I mean, it does sound cool. It does sound cool. <laughs> and you know, actually on Google, you can translate your English into Latin if you want to do that. So you can write your spell and have mm-hmm. Google translate it, mm-hmm. which is kind of cool. And I mean, um, if that does mean something to you where you were like, yeah, this shit's cool. I'm going to do mm-hmm. it. Do it. Of course. Do it. And or you can even make up your own magical language if you want. I, I Harry Potter comes to mind and mm-hmm. the words that that author used, some of them were Latin. Some of them were made up. Some of them were a mix of Latin and made up. She did her own thing when writing that book. And you can do the same thing. Mm-hmm. You can have you can create your own magical language that you only use when you're casting spells that'd be really cool but i have, uh, I have a terrible time with languages and so i'd be like oh, what does that mean again <laughs> she's gonna end up with a baked potato popping up on her yeah. plate when she's trying to yeah. manifest wealth or something oh man it's gonna catch on fire oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> we all remember that story yes um and then like like you said it can rhyme or not it can be a simple sentence you can do a full structured poem you could do a haiku I love oh, haiku, yeah. honestly. I have a it's, hard time with haiku. <laughs> really? I, I love <laughs> I it. Do. And it's a very simple, effective way to get your point across. And it's got the the syllable count that makes it important to me anyway. I, mm-hmm. I like that. Mm-hmm. You can make notes on your spell paper so that when you get to a certain point in your spell, you can write down in the corner, this is when I light my candle. Because you're going to want to make sure that when you're in the midst of casting your magic and trying to gather all this energy, you aren't like, what am I supposed to do with it? And then the energy just kind of yeah. goes away. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and don't forget there are power, there is power in words. So use them carefully. Mm-hmm. Also the phrasing, like you were saying above be affirmative, being affirmative, phrase yeah. it as though what you want to happen is presently true. Make it absolute. 
this happens. This is it. This is going on. Mm -hmm. And then make sure it's descriptive and phrased in such a way that it doesn't leave a lot of loopholes. Like remember yeah. our genie episode that yes. we talked about yes. and trickster magic. You want, you don't want the universe to be going, what the hell is she talking about? Mm -hmm. She wants that potato, yeah. you know, just, yeah. uh, yeah. Oh, no. Okay. So I'm a little off topic on this, this thing I'm about to say. So, okay. um, I, uh, I've never seen anything posted on any social media, like TikTok, Instagram, anything about genies before, just like, you know, the general information that I had based off of our, um, research and then what I grew up with, like watching Aladdin, et cetera. Right. So nothing really, I didn't know anything about genies before I did the research. I didn't know that they were similar to humans and they're invisible mm -hmm. and Me et cetera. Neither. I thought it was very cool. And then you always have to be wary. Well, I was watching TikTok and maybe like three, like not in a row, but like throughout a, a day, like three separate yeah. videos popped up about, and they were, it was in a different languages and everything. So I had to like read comments and understand, but in the, in like the hashtags and in the, the description, cause you know, TikTok has like a translate button. Right. Mm -hmm. It was about genies and Jen. How funny. And it was the, cre it was creepy because they were, I mean, I know over there that they have, there's a definite stigma on genies and mm -hmm. for a good reason, because they are tricky, they are, mm -hmm. et cetera. And they, you have to be very careful when you, you have to protect yeah, yourself. Two out of the three are, uh, of yeah. the three types that we talked about are, are like scary. Mischievous. Yeah. And, mm, and only I don't one evil, is protective. But, yeah. Yeah. But they could, they're, they can be but they're definitely not in favor for you. Mm -hmm. And so these were so creepy because like, and I don't know if they're real. It could have just been a person acting, et cetera, mm -hmm. or somebody who wasn't mentally well or et cetera. Mm -hmm. But it was like this man in a cave and that was already creepy and his eyes weren't quite right. Mm -hmm. But you know, you know how we did the episode on skinwalkers and how when yes. they try to shift, they, they don't shift quite, quite. Yeah, they're not quite right. right. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of like that. But you would think if a genie is very similar to a human, as in like yeah. they could, you know, interact and all of that, it wouldn't be quite like that. But again, there's still a lot that we don't know. And yeah. so it was just, it was so creepy. And all of them looked different in each of the videos. They were like, this is a genie and genie, but they were all from um, the that area in the Middle East. Like the TikToks mm -hmm. were from that area. And I was like, what? are the what are the odds i've never had one of these episodes before or episodes like videos before mm -hmm. before we did our genie gin episode and then after we recorded it i'm getting like three videos That's creepy and they were very creepy oh yeah and then the other one so that one was in a cave there were two that were in a cave and one of them one of them was invisible and it was talking about how it was like, I thought I had a ghost, but it's actually a gene, genie <gasps> gin. That's what we were talking about on our episode. And it was the most terrifying. It is it's exactly what we were talking about. And it was the most terrifying video because you couldn't see it, but they were outside like this invisible figure had a shadow, but you could not see it. And I don't know what happened in the rest of the video. And uh, they were screaming. It was like screaming to maybe lure people outside. I don't know. Oh my god! Oh man, it Creepy. it gave me the goosebumps, and I did not like it. But when like you could see the shadow, and it was freezing outside, so when the man spoke, who was recording, his like breath, you breath. know, like when mm -hmm. it's cold, but it like kind of went around this figure <gasps> that you could not see. And I was like, oh how do god. you like how do you edit something like that? Because it wasn't yeah. like the best of quality. Like it was like you know one of those older phones or something like. It was very wild. So those were like the three that I saw. They were all in different figures. Like one of them was more humanoid. One of them was not humanoid at all. And the other one was invisible, like we talked about, sort of yeah. like a ghost. Crazy. That is creepy. And yes. to, to have those pop up after we've done after. our episode. And so I'm like, okay, does my Did phone Did we bring ourselves to, to the attention? No, I don't want to. I don't. I know. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want I don't I don't want to deal with anything like that because that's just not in my practice that I want to deal with it's not something that I want to it's just a know, very do. strong coincidence <laughs> I don't that, like like it. you said we've never seen anything on mm -mm. genies we had to go never. deep dive search deep diving and all of the and stuff now, that I found out sudden, was so interesting and now you're getting videos now I'm getting videos that's creepy 
me no like. <laughs> <sighs> okay, well, back to how to, back write, to, a how to write a spell. Okay, um, so but thank- now we need to tell you guys how to not manifest having genies in your life. <laughs> Right. And <laughs> as soon as we figure that out, we'll let you we'll know. Let you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Think anyways. of think of your writing of the spell as a set of instructions or maybe even like a recipe, especially if you're a kitchen, which oh, yeah. it might be a recipe. Yeah, I guess it could be. So but, you I mean, write... there's like an irony there because I don't write down any of my spells. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> yeah, I, don't I don't write down any either. of my recipes either. So Me either. Okay. Then the, Me it either. fits. It fits. <laughs> which works with the way, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it fits. Um, but write your spell down step by step so that when you're in the middle of the spell and you're having to concentrate on keeping this energy focused, you don't Mm -hmm. get confused and lose your, your momentum. Yeah. Um, Casting a spell requires that you raise the energy that will then fuel that spell and your intentions and magic and get it out into the world. So you've got to be able to do that without getting confused. So Mm -hmm. be very detailed, as detailed as you can in your spell, you know, like light, light candle here, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, pour salt here, whatever. And then you might chant or dance, like you said, or use visualization or sing, Mm -hmm. uh, but write down exactly when during the spell casting, these things are to be done. Um, and make sure that these things don't just do them because, oh, I think it would look cool to light a candle the things that you do need to work towards raising that energy. That's the whole purpose of Mm -hmm. all of these additives and ingredients in your spell. So otherwise there's no need for it. Um, Oh yeah. And then at the end of the spell, you release that energy um, with focused intent. And then when you're done, you open your circle. If you cast one to begin with, or you can just sit back and relax. This might be something that you would do because you don't really you know, you might let that shield down that you've made go up um, and you relax, comforted by the knowledge that the spell will going to be is going to work, which mm-hmm. you've got to have that positive, you know, don't let doubt creep in because that's going to screw up your energy. Yeah. yeah. And then if you do use your computer, like you said, or like a phone to write your spell, be careful of autocorrect. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just yeah. imagine, you know, I want I want a breeze and you end up with geese and you know, that, that would Mm. definitely, so be careful of um, using autocorrect and just doing it on a whim. You really want to put the detail in there. You know, that kind of reminds me, I don't know. Do you ever play that telephone game? Uh, Like where you whisper in the first person and they haven't played that in a while. It's been a long time. Kid. (laughs) I was like in Girl Scouts, we used to do that. And so the first thing that you say is nothing at the end of what you said. So it mm-hmm. could be like you whisper Aloha Mora. And by the time it gets to the end, they're like, Aloha, more pineapple. That's a great spell. <laughs> <laughs> Aloha, so, yeah, more you, pineapple. You know, we're, we're sending these words out into the universe. Yeah. So be as clear and concise as you can be. So the universe isn't going, oh, she wants a pineapple. She wants pineapple. <laughs> she wants some geese. Here's 20. <laughs> Yeah. No, I could see the geese going wrong because you you want geese, but how do you want geese? And then you wake up with geese poop all over your car. I know, right? (laughs) The essence of geese. Yeah. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely. And then also, when you're doing your spell, you also want to maybe think about the elements that you can incorporate. So I know we talked about candles, which is fire. But Mm -hmm. what if you have a bowl of water? You like that could be a reflective surface, such as for divination, etc. Mm-hmm. And then, so each of the elements can be set for your intention, and it can mm-hmm. be used in any different way candles for fire, a little dish of water, or you can have a potato for earth, or uh-huh. um, air, <laughs> maybe pineapple. Pineapple <laughs> air um, could be like maybe you have a diffuser and it's putting out some type of like or smoke incense. or incense, yeah. etc. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I think, um, you know, we've got four, five elements, really, if you count spirit, the air, fire, water, earth, and spirit. And so think about your spell and decide which one of those, if any, you don't have to use the elements. No, you don't have to. And you can use more than one. Mm -hmm. Uh, But figure out if if they should be a part of your spell. And if so, how are you going to 
use it? What mm-hmm. are you going to use to represent those elements? Some witches do use all five elements in a spell. Some of them feel like that is, you know, it, the universe is made up of all five elements. You have to use all five elements. And some spells only use one or none at all. Mm-hmm. But like for earth, you could use salt or a flower or a plant or actual dirt. Potato. Um <laughs> Potato. We love the potatoes <laughs> for fire. Uh, obviously, a lit candle is perfect. Um, if you've got one of those little cauldrons that you can burn things in, you can build a little teeny tiny fire in your little cauldron. Um, for water, maybe a seashell or like you said, a bowl of water mm-hmm. uh, can be used. Oh, for a seashell. Spirit. I like the seashell though. Yeah. And then for spirit, since it's your own spirit, you need something that represents you and that's going to be different for each one of us mm-hmm. what would and, represent you oh god alcohol <laughs> <laughs> cocktails baby okay uh that's not the answer you? i was thinking i don't know i was trying to think maybe hmm. Hmm, i don't know what would represent me i'm looking around my house oh gosh i don't know anything well it- it would also be geared to whatever your spell intent was, too. Yeah, but, like, what is something that embodies me? I don't know. I'm going to have to You're think on it. very organized <sighs> and clean. Maybe jars. <laughs> jars might be good. I, I can love see that. a good jar, and so incorporating, mm-hmm. like, something with the jar. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I think in seriousness, fire would be me. Yeah. That would be... I would use some kind of fire. Yeah. Mine would be a jar full of some sort of herb that I cook with. I could see that. Maybe garlic, which is garlic an herb? Oh, I could see that for sure. Would you define garlic as an herb? Yes. Hmm. And Greg's going to email us and say, it is not an herb. It's not an herb. He's going to say, it is an herb. (laughs) You were right for once. (laughs) Yeah. Like the shake of the head. We've talked about that. I know. I I feel so bad for that man as he's listening to us. He's going, oh my God. (laughs) Oh man. But anyway, the ingredients need to be there to raise a specific energy. So make sure that mm-hmm. the things that you choose are appropriate for whatever it is you're trying to do. Yeah. Exactly. Like if you're trying to calm things down and have it be smooth, you might not want to use fire mm-hmm. because fire is more passionate and yeah. agitated and that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And you definitely want to have a flow to your Mm -hmm. spell you don't want it to be all choppy you don't want to be like okay uh what are these for again what is this what am i supposed to be doing how am i going to start and then you don't think about the end you you want to think about the process get everything together set your intention and then go so you want Mm -hmm. to ensure that smooth progression from the beginning to end and then you're going to consider your emotional and energetic flow throughout that process as well yeah, I think that's very accurate. I mean, flow can come from the way you write a spell. You could make it conversational if you're working, say, with your ancestors or a deity, because you m- might be conversational. Uh, poetry has a lovely flow to it. Um, as for the words, make sure your spell flows from that beginning to the end in a logical way. Like like Ren was saying, you want mm-hmm. it to be uh, the process to go to make it in order mm-hmm. so that it's going mm-hmm. from the beginning all the way to the end where the intent is then manifested out into the yeah. to the world. Um, but I also want to say that don't stress it. I know we're going like, boom, bam, bam, true. here's all the stuff you need to do. But it's also your flow, your progression, and it should be a very enjoyable process. It should be and it, very enjoyable. So yeah, you're it may just be maybe you're that, forcing something too much or yeah, maybe something you're like say, that. I'm a wanna get some money and that's all you need. I that's mean, it's all, just yeah. So yeah. we want you to understand it doesn't have to be very cookie cutter. This is XYZ, how you write a spell. We're just giving suggestions. You mm-hmm. it and do what you will. It should be very fun. <laughs> it should yeah, be Yeah, I mean, process. hopefully. This episode will help people who really were just, I, I have no idea where to begin. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And hopefully it might have even given some ideas to the experienced practitioners oh, yeah. that listen and go, oh, you know, I didn't really think about that. I'll try to use that next time. Mm-hmm. And then some people might go, this is not what I do at all. And that's yeah, fine too. That's absolutely fine. Yeah. So, you know, in a release spell, 
like to get someone or something out of your life, mm -hmm. a lot of times what you do at the end of that one is you burn that piece of paper. Mm -hmm. But if you're wanting to do a progressive spell that takes time, I guess, uh, like it's not done in one instant, you can do a progressive spell, which is a series of spells written into your journal, maybe. And then you take it from where you are to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. And then when you conclude your spell, conclude it with gratitude. Express thanks to the energy oh, that, yeah. that you use, the elements that aided you, any spiritual entities that you invoke during your spell. This creates a sense of closure and respect for all of the energies involved. And then after all of this, this is a very important step, which I don't know that people even think about. You're going to want to evaluate how your spell went. Oh, so sit down as soon as you can after you finish your spell, after you've cleansed and all of that, and mm -hmm. write down notes about how the process went, what felt right, what didn't feel right. Uh, did it all go as, as planned like you wanted it to? If you repeated the spell, would there be anything you would change about it? And then after you're done, put them away for future use. And then some magical traditions warn against talking about a spell until after a specific period of time has passed. They feel like if you do speak of the magic, that it will in some way affect the manifestation of that spell. Mm -hmm. So you want to, if, if that's your practice and if that's your belief, then that's what you, you don't talk about it. Kind of like if you make a wish on birthday candles, you can't take, say what it is because it won't come true. Yeah. Same, same type of principle. And then observe whatever traditions you want that are for your own practice. You know, if you are more into the animal side of things, you know, you do whatever you need to do with that. If you used your familiar to help cast the spell, make sure you grat express gratitude to your familiar and comfort your familiar because they've given of their energy to help you. Mm -hmm. um, but be sure to do your own written evaluation, even if it's just for your own eyes. And oh, then yeah. you can come back to it time after time and look at it and then add a note and say, you know, it manifested this way, which is probably because I used this herb, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you can add to it and it'll be, you should, you could do this in your um, grimoire or your book of shadows. Oh yeah. This is a I perfect mean, yeah, place Yeah, it's for just that. important to write it down anywhere because, you know, I yeah. go, I'll remember that. And then I don't remember and that. And then we don't. So, yeah. so writing it down is perfect. And then as with any spell work, remove all traces of the process when you're done. Dispose of any materials that need to be disposed of and whatever methods appropriate. Mm -hmm. could be mm -hmm. burning. It could be burying it in the earth, dissolving it in water. And then clean and store all your magical tools mm -hmm. and replace any used items so you'll be ready for the next time. Yep. So when you're casting a spell, I also want to talk about um, you know, personal personalization. I know we've talked about that, but really putting your personality into it. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important. So you can add like personal anecdotes, successfulness, et cetera, based mm -hmm. off of like, if in your journal, you say, yep, that worked because of this. And then you add maybe because of this, I did that with your personality, with mm -hmm. whatever you did, or if it didn't work, then you can just say, I'm going to do that next time mm -hmm. and maybe add a little bit more personalizing like that. to it. I like that idea. And then you also have to remember that um, there are, what's the word? Moral, morale or ethics. Morality, ethics. Yeah. yeah. And stuff like that when it comes to casting a spell. So depending on if you're trying to cast a hex or if you're trying to cast a spell on somebody to help them in any way, you still need to have maybe their consent Again, it's and, your own practice. Yeah. These are just general guidelines. Yes. Like I think the, the Wiccan religion believes in the threefold law. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, not everybody believes in that. It, it's just work. Consider the ethics of your situation from your perspective and go with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just wanted to bring that up because there might be somebody who's like, well, you didn't talk about if this, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's your own practice. We are just here to help you 
start or give you information or maybe mm -hmm. get you out of a what do you like block you know not writer's block yeah yeah um maybe you're not being you're not inspired and maybe we can inspire you on something mm -hmm. but i do want to say if you are somebody who believes in karma if you are somebody who you know Ha believes in repercussions just make sure mm -hmm. you are careful with the types of energy you're putting out into the world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but that's all that we have yeah yeah i think you know trust your intuition embrace the joy like you said this should be fun magic is is fun mostly mm -hmm. um magic is a reflection of your self your inner world yes, so let your imagination run wild and then mm -hmm. always remember like to paraphrase Spider-Man's uncle, with great magic comes great responsibility. That's not exactly what he said, but you get the idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so that's all we have. You want to do the outro? Yes. So if you want to find out more about us, you can go to www.c3witchypodcast.com. There you will find links to literally everything. We have our newsletter. We have our merch. We have our... Uh, information about our subscriptions we you it'll take you directly to our episodes and um i want to say i've been working a little bit on updating our website a little like getting mm -hmm. it maybe a little bit more i don't want to say user, user friendly, friendly yeah. but things are bigger it catches your eye and it's a little bit easier to navigate and there's i added a new section for our after dark episodes mm -hmm. so if you are curious and you don't want to travel all the way to patreon or etc and you don't know what's going on then there's a whole section there where it talks about what the episode has and so if you do yeah, want what to the listen latest to it, episode is mm -hmm. you can click on the buttons that i have directly next to it so if you are interested just it, it'll take you right there and I updated our social media so you can click on the actual icons to take you straight mm -hmm. to our social medias if you would like. That's Instagram, Facebook, X, YouTube is very important, and TikTok. Please go yes. to our YouTube channel and subscribe and um, maybe comment or like our videos or have even listen to our episodes on YouTube. That would help mm -hmm. us a lot. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying to make our way to being able to do this full time. I would love to be mm -hmm. able to do this full time and be able to sustain myself. <laughs> yeah. And YouTube has monetization, but we've got yep. to get to a certain level of subscribers mm -hmm. and listens mm -hmm. and all of that. So it really so would help. It uh, would. So. And uh, I think that's it. I think so. So we'll be back. We'll be back. And until then, stay witchy. Woo.